What's good creative fam, Brandon Washington here and in today's video, I just got back in town from going to NAB where I got a chance to see a ton of stuff including the Black Magic Pocket Cinema Camera. And in this video, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about it and what I think it means for the filmmaking industry. What's going on guys? First of all, if this is your first time to the channel, definitely consider hitting that subscribe button because this channel is all about filmmaking gear, tips and tutorials. And so if you're into any of those kind of things, this is the perfect channel for you. But with that being said, as I mentioned before, this video is all about the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera. So recently I was in Vegas for the NAB show, which if you guys don't know what that is, Basically, it is like the world's largest camera convention where there's basically every camera out there. And in most situations, somebody comes with a brand new camera or some new tech that stands out. And in this case, this was the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera. Now, the biggest things about this camera that stood out to me was obviously the fact that it not only shot 4K at up to 60 frames per second, but it shot everything in RAW. Now, that is huge, especially because of a point that I haven't even mentioned yet, and that is the fact that this camera is going to start out at just $1,299. So for $1,300, you're going to be able to get a camera that shoots 4K at 60 frames per second in RAW. A few other highlights that this camera also has is it's gonna be able to record to SD cards or CFast cards. Obviously, depending on what recording Kodak you record in, you'll choose which of those you'll be able to use. On top of that, it actually just uses Canon batteries. So the same Canon batteries that you'll find in a 5D, a 7D, 8DD, um, I mean, a tons and tons of Canon cameras, you're gonna be able to use those exact same batteries for this camera. And just to take things kind of to that next level, this camera is gonna offer you the ability to shoot in super slow motion at 120 frames in 1080p. And so as you guys know, with my 1DX, I love shooting with this thing at 120 frames per second. And so being able to see basically all the same features that I love about my 1DX inside of a camera that is basically $1,300 and it can do all those same things at RAW, I'm incredibly pumped and I think this is a camera that a lot of filmmakers are going to be gravitating to at least to check it out because with a spec sheet like that it's hard to ignore this camera. Now a couple things that I also need to mention about this camera so it does have a micro four thirds sensor so basically what I'm able to understand is that this camera is going to have the same sensor as the Panasonic GH5 S, which is their new low light sensor, which means this camera should do phenomenal in low light conditions. The other thing is that this camera has a full HDMI, a touch screen, and it also has a micro XLR input, so you will be able to run audio directly into this camera. From picking it up and holding it, the first thing is that yes, this is a little bit bigger than I expected. When you see pocket cinema camera, you think about their last pocket cinema camera, and this one is definitely a little bit bigger, but compared to their other lineup of cameras, this thing is very small, more so the size of like a DSLR or something like a 5D, but a little bit lighter. The other thing that I noticed was that this thing was packed full of features giving you things like false color built-in, zebras built-in, peaking built-in, and even though it's a cinema camera, it does allow you to take stills with a nice photo button on the top. But overall, this camera, in my opinion, is a killer in the indie filmmaking industry. Now, quick little disclaimer, if you don't understand what RAW means or why that's really important, well, if you've ever done photography and you've heard people say you need to shoot RAW, or if you're shooting JPEG, switch over and shoot RAW because it gives you more detail in your photos. It's basically the exact same thing when it comes to video. This is actually one of the things that made the RED cameras stand out so much when they were released was because they gave you amazing RAW capabilities and it allows you to change things like your ISO or be able to change things like your white balance in post. So if you didn't quite get it right on set, now you have a second attempt at it. Personally, I think this is an amazing add-on to this camera. I think it's going to fly off the shelves. Right now, unfortunately, it's not gonna be released until September, but pre-orders have already started, so if you haven't pre-ordered it yet, you should definitely consider it. Overall, though, who do I think this camera is for? Well, 
Personally, I think this camera is gonna fit in very well for those people who take video very seriously. I know a lot of you guys on my channel here are very into both. We are more so content creators. We're looking for the best camera for photo and the best camera for video. I will say, and based on what they told me at the booth, this is not gonna be a photography friendly camera. So it's not gonna take amazing stills. So if you're thinking of something for photography, this is definitely not the camera for you. But if you are someone who loves just maybe grabbing a handful of behind the scenes pictures, this will work there. But this is a video first camera. And ultimately, if you take video very seriously, I think you should be keeping your eye on this camera tremendously. Now, as of right now, there is no test footage out on this camera, but hopefully we will be getting some test footage very soon. I would love to see the extent of the dynamic range on this camera and ultimately what all you'll be able to do with this camera in post using that RAW. On top of that, they're also throwing in a copy of their DaVinci Resolve, their pro version with this camera. So overall, it is a phenomenal package and a phenomenal camera. I, I mean, just using it for a few minutes, I was completely blown away. And for all of you guys out there who are thinking, well, micro four thirds, well, what do I do with all my Canon glass? I was assured that you can throw a EF adapter on there and be able to take advantage of all of your existing Canon and or Nikon lenses, whatever you have. So. I think this is gonna be an amazing camera. I am super pumped to check out this camera. Um, if you have any questions about it, definitely leave those comments down below because this camera, in my opinion, is going to change the way that filmmakers, primarily filmmakers, again, this is a filmmaking camera, filmmakers are going to be looking in the industry at videos and cameras in that market. But with all this being said and excited as I am about this camera, if you're excited about this camera too, definitely hit that thumbs up button. Also, if you're new to the channel, definitely hit that subscribe button because I would love for you guys to join this journey and learn more about filmmaking with me. And last but not least, quick question. If you had to choose between going with something like this that is strongly, strongly filmmaking based for $1,300 or bumping up to something like the Sony a7 III that's actually gonna give you the option of photo and video, but you sacrifice some of the video features for those photo features, which one are you more excited about since the Sony is gonna be sitting at $2,000? I'd love to know what you guys' thoughts are because in my opinion right now, these are the two cameras that are absolutely crushing it. So let me know what you guys think down in those comments below. And until next time, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.